Hello. Uh, welcome back to uh, Hitman. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is in Hokkaido. I am hiding in the morgue, which I have to wait till these guys get here. And I am in one of my favorite uh, Requiem suits. Um, it's all white suit. One of the first things that uh, anybody has actually said to me when I originally put it on was... Um, no, I don't want to track the opportunity. The first things that people said when I uh, put it on was, um, it must take an awful lot of effort to clean. And I would say it probably does, but it's such a nice looking suit. All white, red tie, it's, it's just perfect. Um, <clears throat> so, I have a plan. I have never done a suit only. At least I don't think I've ever done a suit only on Japan. So I'm going to attempt a suit only. Try to get a silent assassin as well. I have a plan and hopefully... I can make it work before without screwing it up. So, let's head over here. I'm gonna kind of crouch down because there are people who can see me all around here, or will at least know that I don't belong. So I'm gonna sneak past these guys. These guys never notice. They're just so busy. Um. So one of the things I wanted uh, to discuss while doing this playthrough was uh, talk about fairness. And. <clears throat> not specifically what's fair and what's not fair, although that's an interesting subject. Um, um, but rather how we react to unfairness. So to let you know what I'm doing right now, um, explain things to you. This is Agent Smith. He's been in several Hitman games and generally... He doesn't seem to be a bad... I think he's CIA. He doesn't seem to be a bad agent, but he often seems out of his league and has to be rescued by Agent 47 as he is now. Um, what, this, what this conversation does is gives me the um, all-access card, which means I can go through any door dressed any way I want to. Which, in this uh, level, you have to dress differently and different outfits will get you through different doors. So it's, it's a very convenient thing to have. Anyway, <coughs> uh, ask yourself, when somebody treats you unfairly, how, how do you react? Now, the natural reaction is to protest, to put your sides of the story forward, and so on, and most of the time, that's the absolutely wrong thing to do. Um, people will either presume you're making excuses, oh, excuse me, or that you're just being hot-headed or temperamental or whatever. So, it's generally not a good idea to react immediately. What's a much better idea... So I'm going to come in here and poison some stuff. But what's a better idea is to take a break, step back, um, and think about it. Think about what best course of action you should take. Ooh, I was almost in there. And uh, how to act, how to react to different things. Ooh, now I'm confused thought this was the right way, but apparently it's not. Hmm. Now, I, if only I can remember what, which way is the right way to go where I want to go. Let's see, where are these guys? Okay, they're both on the same side of the table, so I can squeeze past them. It might be this way. I, oh, we, okay, yeah, uh, this is the right way. Whew, got lost there for a second. And I have to wait till she leaves. Um, yeah, but usually take a break. Uh, think about what, how you're going to react to things, what you're going to do, that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's one of my targets, and that's essentially putting poison into his body. So... So, yeah, get out of here quickly. Whew. One target down. All right. Soda's down. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel about this one. Well, that's for another time. Yamazaki. Okay, awaits. now, hopefully I can get out of here without screwing up. <laughs> um, but one of the things I, I find have found... So, yeah, think about it and come back with a plan or a better way to do it. Hospital director Nakamura 
or what you should do. Ooh, nope, not there. Please come to the operating theater. Start. So trying to. <laughs> this is the part where things could easily go wrong very quickly. Okay. Watch the mini map. That does not look good at all. Okay, I know exactly where I'm at too. Ah. Okay. So that's not a good place to go. Whew. I'm scaring myself here. That's the problem when you can't remember how to get out of places. So. Okay, I gotta wait for these guys. Anyway, yeah, when you're treated unfairly, how do you react? And usually the best reaction, once you've sat down, once you've thought about it, is actually to do nothing, to let it stand. Now, there are times when you shouldn't do that, but there are also times when it's not a bad thing to do, that, to just let it stand and keep cool about it. Let's see. Okay, there's a bathroom, there's... Okay, this is... Wait. Feels... I hate it when it does that music. It feels like I'm about to get caught. Okay, he's there. I'm trying to remember the best... There should be a... If I can get past this guy... Who's gonna see me, but... Mister. Jason Portman. So I, I believe Please there's come to the hospital a way he's going to turn his back on me and I can knock him out. So I'm going to attempt that. So, <clears throat> Jason and then leave him a somewhere. Anyway, um, so an interesting aspect entrance. of um, how we're reacting when we're being treated unfairly that seems to have come up in recent years is one of we react not to things that have happened to us but what has happened to our uh, ancestors what sometimes more than a hundred years previous and that we are we judge that to be unfair and then we protest against it even though it happened a while ago and we uh, seek uh, reparations for what had happened so I'm gonna dump him there. I should be fine here. Okay. Can I go outside here? Okay, I'm fine. Whew. Okay, that was close. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm mentioning that in particular, um, the desire to um, consider what happened to our ancestors and judge it un to be an unfair thing is that I just that I want to use some of my ancestors as an example of how to uh, behave or how to um, react when we're treated unfairly. So, so what I'm doing here is increasing the temperature so that everybody will get out. And this will leave it empty for when uh, my next target shows up. And she has a bodyguard with her, but she leaves the bodyguard behind when she goes in the sauna. So I just wait here for a while. But I'm going to be using my ancestor's experience. Um to kind of show how I think a really good way to react um, when we're treated unfairly is. Um, so my ancestors, I, I come from a good Mormon stock, so my ancestors were Mormons who crossed the plains, and um, kind of tell you some unfair things that happened to them, specifically. Yeah, specifically in the state of uh, Missouri. Now, there was a lot of dislike for Mormons there. Uh, way more than I can personally explain. Just people just didn't like Mormons. 
and <clears throat> there was a lot of persecution going on because of this. Um, some really, really bad stuff. Um, uh, you should look up, uh, I believe it's Hans Mill. I believe, I believe it's Hans, Hans, Hans or Hannah's Mill, Hans Mill. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but it was a massacre. Uh, men, women, and children were brutally murdered by, um, people who just didn't like Mormons. And, of course, there was, uh, the uh, Missouri Extermination Order, uh, put out by, uh, Governor, the Governor of, uh, Missouri, uh, Lilliburn Boggs. Um, kind of an interesting story about that. It, it, this, uh, order says in part that, uh, Mormons must be driven out of the state or exterminated. Um... And people took that literally, including the Mormons, who thought, oh, he's going to kill us. Oh, my next target. Yamazaki, former lawyer to the Yakuza, and there's your bodyguard. The but um, <clears throat> he took it out. Well, he issued this order, and people took it literally. That, um, let's see, bodyguard's gone? Good. I'm going to block the door. And, yep. There we go. Anyway, a little too hot in there, I'd say. That's both so, down. Time to find an exit. We're done. looks like we're going to have to do a two-part on this um, particular uh, look at it, because I got through this level a little too quickly. So, anyway, we'll finish up with the uh, extermination order, which stated... Um, like I said, to kill the people. And um, both the um, people, anti-Mormons and the Mormons, took it to mean that they would be killed. But uh, Governor Boggs uh, later stated that he didn't mean exterminate in that way, which I personally find confusing because there is no other definition of exterminate. It, it means to kill, to specifically uh, to kill vermin. So... I have no idea what he thinks he meant by it, but regardless of him saying he didn't mean kill by exterminate, he, um, yep, I did, got suit only and silent assassin, and wow, got some good stuff off that. I'm, I was already at level 20, let's see, yep, I'm a silent assassin, five star rating. But the interesting part about Governor Boggs is that he didn't rescind the order once he gave it. He gave the order and... Did not rescind it, didn't change the wording of it at all. So the order actually was on the books until the early 1970s. So it was actually legal to kill a Mormon in Missouri until the 1970s. Um, I always wondered if somebody did that after the Mormons were driven out, if they would have, um, if they could have claimed uh, under that law that they would have, that they had a legal right to do so. Um, but to my knowledge, it never came up. Anyway, uh, like and subscribe if you liked it. I will. Uh, do another video which where I will finish this uh, story of my ancestors and how they reacted. We just got to the first little part, but I think the main point is um, when you re when unfairness happens, stop and think about it. And consult with your friends and call, well, people you trust, I should say, not just friends, family, people you trust. And find out the best solution and be willing to accept that sometimes doing nothing is the best solution. And yep, that's all. I will see you in the next video. Um, yep, and have a good night.